Okay, I'll call this meeting to order. I welcome everybody. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the August 20th, 2019 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the August 6th, 2019 special meeting, council meeting, and the August 6th, 2019 regular council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Deloria, seconded by Councillor Lentoni. All in favor? It's carried. The minutes of the August 13, 2019 Committee of a Whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor. Oh, this is. Uh, we did the oh, regular meeting? Yeah. There was an issue with that. We can choose one. And Councillor Friesen and Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. In the original minutes, we, we uh, I thought we referred to the committee of the whole, the two procurement policies for discussion, but we haven't actually discussed them in the committee of the whole. Uh, the last committee of the whole we did. You missed that one last week. Okay. It was discussed because I didn't see it in the minutes. No committee of the whole, but maybe I missed it. So moving on to receptions and delegations and hearings, uh, 4.1, with the Red Cross emergency management update. So thank you and welcome. And if you want to step forward and make yeah. your presentation. So my name is Annie Papadakis. I work for the Canadian Red Cross. I'm an emergency management coordinator for all of Westman. I also have a small scale disaster team up in a house in Winnipeg. Uh, this is Jessie Horadecki. She does the same job that I do, Emergency Management Coordinator, or she does it for the Northern and Thompson region. Uh, and this is John Clemenson. He is one of our supervisors um, on our small-scale disaster team right here in Swan River. And we wanted to come and, first of all, we want to say thank you for allowing us to come and speak tonight. Uh, it really means a lot to us to be able to be here. The purpose of it, and I know we have a limited time, is if you we want, wanted you to sit if you like. You don't have oh. to stand. Thank you. You're comfortable. Uh, the purpose of this coming was we wanted to let you know that we have a small scale disaster assistance team right here in Swan River, and we cover Swan River and the surrounding area. So what does that team do? I have some literature I'm just gonna pass around. Um, the team basically, if there is a house fire and a family needs some assistance, emergency assistance, they can call the toll-free number at the bottom of this literature that's being passed around. And they can get a hold of our local team. Our local team would then go and meet with the family and provide the first 72 hours of total assistance. So what that means is getting them a hotel room, getting them lodging, clothing, food, personal services, stuff like deodorant or little things to kind of bring back people's dignity um, and to also take off some of the stress that people can feel after they've lost their house. So what we're here to discuss and to ask is we need your help. <laughs> we need your help to let people know that this service is available and the toll-free number at the bottom of the page is how they can reach us in order to access those services. But we also need your help to let people know that we are looking to grow our team. And there is a benefit for people to volunteer for the Red Cross and to volunteer in general. Um, the main benefit is by volunteering with the Red Cross, all of the training is totally 100% free. Um, if we have to send someone to another place to receive training, we pay mileage, we pay meals. Um, it's completely covered by the Red Cross. And what you're getting in the end by encouraging people to volunteer for the Red Cross, for the small scale disaster team, is you're enabling the people in your own community to gain skills, um, gain confidence to go and help people in the biggest time of need of their life after they've lost essentially everything. 
So what we're hoping is that you might be able to provide some insight or some help for us to recruit some volunteers to join our team. And what I've done is I've also brought some other tools. These are little postcards. On one side is a little bit of information on what should be in an emergency kit. And on the other side is how you can volunteer. So if I may, I'd like to pass these around and ask if you have any insight or suggestions, or if you'd like to get in touch with me later um, to provide some insight. And that's all I have. <laughs> do you guys have any questions about the program and what we do? Well, first of all, I want to say thanks and, uh, and also to the Canadian Red Cross for being able to provide the service to people that are in need in our community and, and, help, and everyone else. Uh, as far as recruiting the people, um, that's something definitely you know, you have to think about and recruit. I don't know what you do now as far as recruiting methods on your own uh, and getting out in the community. You have this fellow right here, I guess, from the community, but I don't know how much or how he's been successful as far as getting others or what the challenge is there. Right now, currently, we have five volunteers in Swan River, and our goal is to have 17. Mm -hmm. So we still have quite a bit of ways to go. Um, I know you were saying earlier, John, that we're on the community page. I heard some of you know, when we were doing our barbecue, somebody said that we were on the page. I think it was the town page. Uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, that would be something that would be very beneficial to us if we could get. Um, yeah, just any, any kind of concert to learn. I guess my question was, uh, what what kind of commitment is it to be a volunteer with Red Cross? Like, uh, is it you know two hours a week or ten hours a week, or is it? Uh, I guess what 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 does it all involve? It would all depend. And in Swan River here, it's not quite. Uh, like I know some of the other communities are pretty intense. Ours right now, we haven't. Uh, it hasn't been that bad. It would depend on what kind of. Uh, if there was a rash of fires. Um, I think this year so far we've done three. Other than that, we, have, we have a, usually have a meeting once a month. It takes about an hour. There's a little bit of training involved, maybe a weekend in Winnipeg or something. Uh, it's not, not a, like I said, it's not two hours a week for sure. It would all depend on, on what exactly is happening. If there's, like I said, if we had a rash of fires, it'd be a little more intense. If, if not, we could go a month without pretty much of anything. You, you said you have five Do you have any from the neighboring municipalities at all? Um, we had one from Benito a while back, and we would like to reach out to uh, surrounding communities as well uh, because they can provide insight and also spread that awareness that we do exist and spread the awareness that we're looking for volunteers. Um, absolutely. Councillor White and the Council of Antony. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We're finished. Go ahead. Um, I was going to suggest that perhaps we invite uh, or invite the material at least to G5. Um, that would be one way of us spreading that. There's a group of all of the school division and all of the municipalities. So right, that's the first weekend of October. Our first that's Monday of October. Yeah. Oh, so that would be fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, the second is if you left a bunch of the material, I think virtually every community committee uh, has somebody from council who's a liaison. And uh, certainly for the two or three that I'm involved with, I can find certainly prepared to take um, those two. Um, the group council, Councillor Friesen to your committee because she's the worker amongst the seven of us. And Councillor White, he's a fantastic recruiter. So those would be you know, two suggestions. Let's see where uh, if you work some people that actually have, so it would be perfect. Um, and lastly, um, uh, perhaps, uh, Mr. Kroll, if we could have the fire chief coordinate with them because he may have um, certainly a better handle on how to connect with disaster people and people who might be um, interested in volunteering but maybe not quite ready or able for the fire department. Those are the only suggestions I have. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. I'll I guess I have two questions. One is, in no particular, what do you do now relative to recruiting? And two, do you use Facebook? Because there's a handful of us. If, for example, John is a Facebook friend of mine. If he posted me, 
have a lot of pals that are, I know some of them, they're Facebook friends. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of pals, you know some of them? <laughs> and I, I would certainly share that, and some of those other guys have large numbers of pals too, for political expedience, I guess. But it, it certainly works. Mm -hmm. So if John considered posting me, hey, we need some, it's one hour a month, we, we help people in need, bottom line, and I'm a lot of feeling for that. Uh, that's something I can certainly do. That would be amazing. That would be yeah, wonderful. Um, we, and jo we have lots that um, John can post on Facebook. So if he's comfortable oh. you doing that, we yeah. can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Or I can add you as a friend and I can just keep sending you stuff. <laughs> uh, <I> you, <laughs> you, you don't have to know me if you don't want to. I could be one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I share it all. Good stuff I share. Yeah. Some apparently is not that good I share, I should, but that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Tony. I just want to commend you on your efforts with the Red Cross. It's um, very uh, noble and it's a, a good cause. And we thank you for all, all your efforts with that. Um, in terms of assisting to recruit, it's probably one of the hardest things that I think any organization currently is looking for is volunteers. I think everyone is is struggling in some form. So any way that you can get your message across is of, of the utmost value. Um, my suggestion to you, as well as to bring this to the Chamber of Commerce, um, in which I'm the president of as well. Oh, perfect. Our, our coordinator there would, Just be, wrote it. would be more than happy and we if we can share and send out the information for you. So if you have anything digital, um, mm -hmm. feel free to send that over to the Chamber office and that'll go out too all the business community, but as well as their family. Perhaps we could, oops, perhaps we could uh, pay for a blast. Yes, absolutely. And we'd be, uh, we can talk about what we can do in, in terms of email blasts and um, send outs and things like that. So yeah, reach out to the Chamber of Commerce. Stacy and myself will be more than happy to, to see what we can do and, and assist you with that avenue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and I don't think, sorry, Mr. White, is that Okay. Um, we didn't answer your first question because you asked how are we recruiting right now. Um, so right now we just had a meeting with all the volunteers this evening and we were discussing community events. So this is something that we've been trying in Thompson and it has been working extremely well. And so we're going to try it here as well in Swan River. And so what that means is your fall suppers, your... I forget what all we said, there was a list of things, sorry. But what, what the plan is, is to have our wonderful volunteers wearing the Red Cross vests, volunteering at these other events that happen locally throughout the year, just to get that exposure so that, like you said, the more people know that we're here, the more they'll be willing to volunteer, right? So that's one of our big projects for the rest of this year is to do a lot of community events. It's a great idea. Council Friesen, and then Council White. This Sunday is the Harvest Festival. You're wearing your stuff out at the museum. I feel we could, yeah. Yeah, I think you should. It would be a great place. Uh, I'm not volunteering right now, but I have firsthand these blankets. My daughter lived in High River, and Red Cross was a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's a relatively new entity in our community, the Swan Valley Business Consortium, is that what they're called? Sorry, yeah. And uh, they meet once every couple months, 90 minutes, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, they solicit input from community groups who want to do things. Derek Armstrong uh, coordinates that, Derek is with the co-op, and say, hey Derek, can we get five minutes? Uh, I see him as a very including person, they certainly talk things like, Red Cross, so uh, give Derek a call to co-op and say, can we get on your agenda? And uh, hypothetically, those are many of our leaders in the community at those meetings. What is that meeting called, sir? Swan Valley Business Consortium, Valley. and Derek Armstrong, who works with the co-op. September 19th. Pardon? September 19th is our next meeting. Uh, oh, yeah, we get right sorry. And they're 90 minutes. I think that's important. I like meetings, I know they're over 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Consortium Dollars. And just to add with the business consortium, Stacy from the Chamber of Commerce as well is a secretary for that. So Perfect. touch base with her, see her, she'll give you all the information you need. And in terms of community events, we have a massive community calendar that um, on our on the Chamber of Commerce that you can pick and choose events that might work for you. Perfect. So touch base with her, she'll give you all the information you need. Okay, anybody else? So, okay, so uh, again, thank you very much. And I think that we've had a good conversation here. And I think that the town page thing, we, can, we should be able to make that work. And then, of course, the G5 and some of the other recommendations that we made here today and some other people that you could make connection with. Uh, we can find some volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the So we'll wait these. Um, mm -hmm. we will pass them. Yes. yes. Just leave them with uh, Mr. Kroll there. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. 4.11. Green Medwood and Pat Yaskin. Uh, regarding non-local uh, company contract rules. Come forward. Welcome. Hello. I'm back. Good evening. Well, it's always good to see you. Hi, <laughs> Okay. So, thank you. Okay, so, um, I was listening to Bill Gates' editorial on August 9th, and now I have some questions for you on recycling contracts and the arena and the ice contracts. So, was in fact a local company, other than the Lions, approached by the town or council to discuss and or submit a quote slash tender, I don't know the proper term when a tender is not actually put in the paper, uh, for recycling services prior to the fall 2018 elections? What was, sorry, what was the question? Was a local company, other than the Lions, approached by the town or any member of council to discuss and or submit a quote or tender for recycling services prior to the fall 2018 election? I'll be for the goals of the end. Okay. So I personally spoke with the owner of SV Solutions, who said he was the one who submitted the proposal. He was also told by the town and or council that it was going to be tabled until after the fall elections. Did anybody, especially our re-elected council members, did anybody give the due courtesy to that company to let them know that you are going ahead with the recycling search and that you will be putting a tender in the paper and that they would need to resubmit their proposal based on that tender in order to be considered? Yeah, it was advertised. It was advertised, but did you directly contact that company? Did you contact SV Solutions, who the last time they spoke with town and or council were told, we will get back to you after the elections? Did anybody actually call SV Solutions when you decided to submit a tender in the paper and proceed in the logical process usually used? to let them know that if they wish to be a contender and considered, that they do need to submit based on the tender advertised. The, 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 it's not up to us to go and, and, and ask people to tender for, or put their quotes in or tender when we do have requests for tenders. If they were asked to give information about perhaps the services prior to it, but when it actually went to tender, it's up to those individuals to bid or tender. Okay, well that's where I disagree. Because to me that is not good business practice. If you are in communications with a business, a person, an individual, and discussing solutions, and you're interested in what they have, and you say we're gonna table it, we'll get back to you, the courteous thing to do, and the upfront and honest thing to do, is say, hey, you know what? We've got this back on the table. This is how we're proceeding. If you're still interested, please submit a tender. Please submit ever, a bid. I don't think it was ever tabled. It was all handled at a committee meeting. 
right? So we're going to council meeting. Whether it was tabled or whether it wasn't, that to me, not relevant. The fact that you engage in communications with a business is poor business practice to then leave them out in the cold and not even let them know that what you had previously discussed, that you said we'll get back to you on, is now null and void and you're not even looking at it or considering it because they didn't submit a tender because they were under the impression that you already had their proposal. The, the whole conversation at that time was at committee level, like Derek, Mr. Poole had said. It had not gone to the point where it was in tender documents. Okay. So, so therefore, when it actually did, when the committee did make some recommendations as far as where they wanted to go with that, then they put out the tender documents that Mr. Poole had done. It would be up to the individual Swan Valley Solutions, if this is the case, to make uh, to put a proposal in or to bid, not proposal, but to bid on that job. If he chose not to, it, it's, it's unfortunate that he did not. I don't think that he was told that we would be in contact with him to ask him to tend, to bid on any tender. That is... But that's, of course, the, that's your opinion. I, I don't know what else to say. That is the opinion of that business owner. Whether it was committee or whether it was council, Again, if you're in discussions, that's just poor business practice, in my opinion. So to just go out and put in a tender, but not get back to a company that you had obviously had back and forth communications with and say, okay, we're moving ahead, there's gonna be a tender put out. If you're still interested, please submit so we can continue discussions. That's bad business. I had, I've had several conversations between the proposal that was uh, given to the town and, and in between we tendered right in the front lobby explaining that we were at committee level undecided and and you know, obviously we were undecided we didn't know which way to go and we would likely be putting out a tender and that's exactly what happened. Okay, so who was it that contacted OSS to let them know there was a tender in the paper? I don't know why you'd be asking that question. And how is it fair that somebody from town or council contacts an out-of-province business to let them know there's a tender in our paper and we're looking for recycling services? If you're interested, submit one. But yet we can't serve, say, serve the same due courtesy to a local business who we were openly in discussions with on a committee level. You're suggesting that uh, somebody has contacted one of the uh, tend tender companies, which I don't think even happened. Those companies, whoever is making uh, or, or uh, applying for uh, these positions or whatever, they they're looking at papers all over the countryside. They're, nobody here is phoning them and telling them, hey, there's something in the paper, you should look at it today. Interesting. Councilor White. I'm having a lot of empathy for what you're saying, and I appreciate your thought pattern. However, let's say I'm the person applying. If I'm talking to our guy, for example, Derek and Mr. Cole, in this instance, we say we're looking around, we're, we're doing this, we're doing that, we hope to get it with the new election. I think I would have a responsibility phone them back, say, what's happening? Because I want that business. If I want the business, I have to chase them. Then. And I'm born and raised in a small business. And I think, uh, you know, if he's saying, well, we're going to look at it in the new year, I'd be phoning Derek in the new year, what's happening? So it's, it's, it's not as, and I appreciate the, those, those things you said. Absolutely, I do. But the person on the other side has a responsibility to search out answers also. And my understanding is they have met with Derek. Pardon me? My understanding is they had met with Derek and there was no straightforward answer. There was no, we're putting a tender in the paper. There was no nothing. Although one time when he was in Derek Poole's office, he did mention that he did see the Rolodex open to OSS. I, I don't really want to get into debate about that. You know, like he says, she says and all that because we have to respect you know, what, uh, what Mr. Poole does in the office here too and, and follows the process that we have before them. So I don't think it's fair to get into the thing discussion or debate about who said what. Fair enough. I still fail to understand 
how it's good business practice to turn a cold shoulder to our local businesses and seek out and send our local tax dollars out of province to provide our services. So is it true that there is in fact 90 days to cancel the contract with OSS? And is anything being done by the town to actually pursue local services if they do exist here? Yeah. Yeah. If you uh, take those sheets that I gave you there, mm -hmm. that's what the town is compelled to do by law. We're, we're compelled by law to consider any company from here to Vancouver, all the Western provinces, we have to treat them as local. It's the law. Right? So we're not allowed, to, it's illegal to select a local company uh, just because they're a local company. They have to be the lowest bidder. Fair enough. My understanding is SB Solutions did in fact have a lower bid than OSS when they were in initial conversation with the committee. Is that true? No. Was the uh, contract cost published publicly? Was the bidder tender published publicly what that is costing us taxpayers? It's in the financial plan as well, I believe the resolution to accept. So yeah. It's in the financial plan as well. I will have to uh, go back to SP Solutions and double check what their proposal was, but it's my understanding that they did have the lower bid. They did, they, they did not tender. Granted, they right. did not submit tender, but that's where we're nitpicking on good and bad business practices. Yeah, the, the proposal, the first proposal that we submitted on was not based on the same scope of work of what was accepted in the new year. Yeah, originally a proposal was submitted for waste collection as well as recycling services and managing the recycling depot at the landfill site. The tender was, I don't recall specifically, but through the committee, I watched the meeting, it was decided that you guys were gonna isolate to just recycling and deal with garbage collection at another time. Whether the tender, because I don't have it in front of me and I didn't have time to go to the Star and Times to call up past issues to read it again, but whether it was tendered for all of those and you chose to selectively look at just recycling, again, to me, that's bad business. It's bad business. When you're in communications with somebody, I don't care whether it's politics, I don't care whether it's your local grocery store. When you're in talks with somebody, you say, we're gonna table something, we're, we'll get back to you. The courteous thing to do is get back to them. Councilor Gray. Let's assume for the sake of this discussion that we didn't get back to when we should have. What would we do now? What is it you would have us do now? Well, that's where my question with regards to do you have 90 days to cancel your contract with OSS? The contract provides cancellation costs, but what would you have us do? Are you suggesting that we should send it back to a committee for consideration? I'm suggesting that if there's time, absolutely. Because SV Solutions should have been given that communication, whatever you want to call it, to say, hey, look, we're back on the books with this. If you're still interested, here's what you need to do. Just one needs to hear what you were asking for, because that, we've gone over that ground a number of times, and I don't think we're going to gain anything by the report over. I did want to note, I, I'm, I, I don't remember seeing it, but I know that it's our practice to, to publish in minutes what the awarded contracts were. And just in terms of the process, I was on the committee event and put it, sat in at the last meeting. I think we all sat in on that last meeting. And then when we were at council, the tender called for two of the three things, not handling out there because that contract is not yet. But uh, it was both garbage collection and recycling. And the tender, as I recall, specifically said we would consider both or either which included our own forces. And the analysis was actually fairly complex and complete in terms of going through own forces, which was and going through the lions and the other tenderers. And, and the ones that were in front of council at that time, we developed the decisions 
based on that. No. Uh, not everybody agreed with every part of, of all the decisions, but at the end of the day, the decisions were made based on the two lowest cost items at this time, which was own source for garbage collection, and um, OSS was the lowest process for recycling. So uh, I, I, that's all I can tell you is that that, and I, I, you know, I don't even know prior communications. I don't know anybody here who communicated with OSS, and there was never a suggestion at any committee meeting that anybody had talked to OSS before. It, there was no, I, 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 I mean, I'm not saying they didn't. I'm saying that nobody came forward and said, well, I talked to OSS um, outside of the process. The process was followed pretty rigorously. Now, whether or not we looked at it in committee, um, you know, that would take, I think, the owner um, of, I don't think we're going to start the process now on the basis of uh, somebody else. If, if he came forward and said, look, I've got a better proposal for you, I don't suppose we're ever going to shut things down. On the other hand, candidly, I'm not sure it's great business to get into a three-year contract and cancel even if you have a 90-day clause just because you have a shorter, a, a immediately closed bidder. We have it. We're actually tonight going through a procurement process. I have some, a couple of comments on it, but we, we're going through a procurement process um, to exactly go through that piece. And the process involves going through an assessment of the bid and whether it meets our needs and criterion, and then an assessment of the price. So there's a balancing of those two interests. Unlike um, just taking the lowest bidder, or unlike um, we had some very public situations where we took a, a local bidder ill-considered in my view and contrary as Mr. Cole said to the law. But we, but we have a process now that is very different. So if he wants to make that pitch, I guess we can consider it. I don't know. I, I'm not going to speak for any of the others. I, I'm certainly not close to the idea, but I can tell you that it would take an overwhelming reason to cancel a contract we've entered into. That doesn't mean that the end of the two or three years we have a contract because we wouldn't look at it. But if, and if it's at half the price, I guess maybe we talk about it. But if it's a few dollars, I think it would be foolish to ruin our reputation by entering into an agreement and canceling within a few months. So that's my view on those issues. Do you have other contracts you want to talk about? Yes. Could you just uh, stop to tell me what I'm going to do that? If I could, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, Corrine, are you representing the company that you're talking about? Or are you no. Okay, so... But I did do that due diligence and homework, and I went and spoke with the owner of the company. I unfortunately could not speak with Bill because he's away on holidays, but I had hoped to connect with him just to speak to him uh, with regards to his some of his sources in his editorial, but I did not actually have that chance because he's away on holidays. But I did do my research. I watched the council meeting. I saw how the votes went. I did notice that you were the only one opposed to it. Um, I did not actually clearly uh, make out what David Gray's uh, vote was or whether he abstained, and Lance, you were absent. Um, so everybody else was in favor of it. Okay. Personally, I understand that whoever submits a tender is on an equal platform for consideration, and I get that. I don't, it doesn't matter where they're coming from, whether they're local or not. I do tend to agree that if we're talking a 5 or 10 percent difference to keep our economy going, then even if a local company is 5 percent higher, we need to have some very strong reasons other than just a 5 percent lower price to go with another company. Because that's taking our local tax dollars and putting them in another province, another town, another city. How is that supporting local economy and continuing to keep Swan River thriving? Because if we continue to give outside businesses contracts, we're going to be looking at becoming Bozeman, Birch River, Benito, and the surrounding communities. There's not going to be a reason to be coming to Swan River anymore because the businesses aren't going to be able to stay open. Now, our restaurants and hotels might be thriving depending on how far these workers have to commute to complete said contract. But what about the rest of us? What about the rest of the businesses in the town? What about the rest of the services? If there's no work, there's no employment, there's no people. 
I can just go back to finishing my, my statement. Cause All right. It's okay. I respect what you're saying. Absolutely. I'm a small business owner myself. I guess the, um, my point I'm making is that I would hope to, I would hope that you would lecture, um, not lecture, um, express your views to the company in which you're re representing as well, because I think that it's only good business when you find out that you didn't put in a tender or you missed a tender, whatever the case may be, is, is to come forward and, and be that voice and explain, you know what, I didn't get a call, this isn't what happened, whatever the case may be, and explain your side, but I, I, I don't find it very effective when somebody else is, is speaking on behalf of the company when the, when the company is quite capable of, of sitting in that chair as well. Yes, they are. Councilor Gray. And I was, uh, I was going to make similar comments, so I'm not going to belabor the point. You had another, another issue. What was that? You had another issue. I said I was going to make similar points, so rather than belabor it. Was. Oh, okay. Well, my other is to question the ice and arena contract. So, Bill mentioned that there was, in fact, one or more local bids for the arena tender. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, were those local companies unable to meet the expectations for the tender? The, I can answer that. Comes the chair, is the chair so yeah. I have to speak the, on that. We went through, I, again, we, we use a, a different process. We went through a grid of assessment. The uh, company that was awarded the contract had had, I don't remember the exact number, about 300 previous projects similar, not exactly like this one because each one is different, but similar to this and had incredible expertise. They went through incredible detail on how they would do it. And many of the pieces that they described as being included in their price were things that clearly were going to be needed, but which were not in the tender that was provided by the local bidder. Not because he's not competent to do that work, but because he hadn't done that kind of scale or type of a project previously and left some things out. So the result was it was impossible to actually gauge the prices of the two, but it was able, we were able to gauge that one had a superior technical capacity to deliver what we needed. And given the issues that we had with the arena, making sure that we could deliver ice on time and in a way that was consistent with what we needed was the priority. So we have every reason to believe that that local contractor, there are other pieces to the ongoing piece of the arena. There are pieces that are going to come up next year, and I have every reason to believe that that contractor who has great expertise in the areas that are coming up will be... I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be the successful bidder because that would just about be the most ridiculous and unlawful thing I could say, but he will be incredibly competitive, I would expect, and his skill set is such that it would be, he will not lose in that assessment, I don't believe. Local bidders have a local advantage, three local advantages in the bidding process we have. One is that one of the things that we're supposed to test is whether or not they'll have the ability to service the product as they deliver it. Local people inherently have that capacity. It's much harder for people from distance to say that. The second, that they, the second thing that they have going for them locally is that they will have some history or reputation within the community, in particular with the town. And that gives them history or reputation gives them a plus or a minus. Presuming that they've been good contractors, that will give them a plus over most external bidders. And lastly, they should have an inherent advantage in the sense that the cost for them to be here is less. So in all of those ways, we give a local preference, just as any local, as there is a local preference, but we are unable to simply say, because you are local, we are going to, and I'm going to come back to what you commented to me before, that if it's only 5 or 10% above, that we should go with that. Well, in point of fact, one of the reasons I ran was because of a vote that um, took place, and, we, and Constable Tony and I insisted on a reconsideration of the vote. We, we all voted the same way because the consequences would have been too great to cancel that contract. But there was exactly that process, and it is wrong, both in law and in logic. And the responsibility of the council of the town of is to get the best value for the citizens of the town of We do appreciate 
that we need to encourage local business and we do lots of other things to do that and we in fact provide lots of small contract local procurements that are done without bid to local people or without tender. But we, to do major projects that way is illegal and irresponsible. I know what you're saying, and I do get that you need the right people to do the job, and you need the right qualifications and skill set to do it. In your process for the tendering, you mentioned that the local company didn't even have the detail that... The tender didn't have the detail. They didn't have a number of connectors. Okay. They didn't so, have the sand. It wasn't, a, it wasn't actually even a tender, it was a request for proposal. We wanted proposals, we wanted to companies to submit proposals to us on what you, how, do, how do you propose to fix this. So it wasn't a tender in the fact that companies were bidding on a, on a set. We uh, set, we didn't process. process. We didn't set what they had to do. You tell us what you're going to do. Right. Okay, so my question still is basically the same. Does the council and or the committees do anything to work with the companies either during or after the tender or proposal process to actually say, okay, like you were just talking about, you th because the detail wasn't there, okay, I get it, fair enough, you've had some boxes you can check off, I get that, that makes sense. But do you then kind of build relations and kind of say like, hey, you know what, we, kind of feel like you might be able to get this job done, but here's where your proposal or tender is kind of lacking. This is kind of the information that we kind of needed, that we supported, you know, so that they can grow and develop as a business themselves within the economy so that in future times of proposal or tenders, then they might actually be able to grow and develop as a local business to be able to meet those I don't want to say terms or criteria because it's always going to change, but have a maybe a better understanding of the process of what detail kind of needs to be able to be put into that. Because there's a lot of good business people out there, but they can't write a proposal worth beans. So is it just that? Do they have the skill set, but we're lacking that communication piece of getting it through? And it's not saying you guys have to teach them or coach them or do it for them, but to say, hey, you know what? If if you can develop this area or in this range, we can probably, you know, it might benefit you and or others if this is the type of business you're trying to obtain. Just before Councillor Gray responds to that, I'll just say that no member of council or the who, who are the committee members as well deal with any contractors directly. That's management's responsibility. And so I just want to make sure that it's clear that management deals with any of the people that we have hired within the organization. Go ahead, Councilor Gray. Yes. <clears throat> um, you should stay for the rest of the meeting. The, the sole bylaw that's being considered uh, tonight is the uh, procurement bylaw, which has, in fact, in it a process which is uh, for review with any unsuccessful bidders if they chose to avail themselves of that. That's always been sort of available um, nominally, but you know, to my knowledge, very few contractors do that. They just move on. But that process is in fact enshrined into the new bylaw. Um, and so you should, I mean, you, if you watch it or whatever, the bylaw, the new, by, the new bylaw, the new process has that built into it. Um, the second is that, um, I want to echo what um, His Worship just said. My experience, and limited though it's been in terms of being on council with management, is that if, if bidders want to talk to management about what the bidding process is or what they require or what the criteria will be for selection, has been that they've been incredibly open. Now we can always necessarily agree that, that, that we're in the baby steps of learning how to do the new procurement process, and so there have been some um, glitches, not in that particular one, but in some others where, where not everything that might have been assessed was assessed. But, but we're, we're going through a process of getting value for dollars. 
but man, it would have been incredibly open. And so any bidder who wants to do that, I don't care whether they're from Swan River or from Benito or from Vancouver, if they want to talk to our management about how the bidding process goes, what the criterion are, and what the selection process will be, I have every reason to believe that they will be honored in that regard. And that if they aren't, I think council would take that incredibly badly. It would be an unbelievable mistake for council to involve themselves in that process. It, it could not work out well at all. There is nothing good could come from that because ultimately we're responsible for reviewing and improving the decisions. And if we've already committed ourselves to explaining something to somebody, that becomes an incredibly difficult process. Just as it, yeah, in some of the procurement processes, the CAO was responsible for that, for him to, to say, well, if you do this, that would make me really happy. I think, um, I don't know, but I'm almost guaranteed that if somebody came to me and said, the other guy went to the CAO and he was promised a job because he said, if you do this, you, you know, you're going to improve your chances. I'm thinking that we're going to immediately file for the arbitration process and be successful. I'm not necessarily referring to that, but more in a sense that, okay, so you're open beforehand for any information and, okay, I get that if it's management, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So the management is open beforehand to help assist with explaining and making sure anybody wishing to submit a bid or tender understands the entire process. What about post? There's a and it's not so much about if you do this, I'll be really happy and you'll get the next job, but more kind of like, well, this is kind of where you were weak. This might be where you were strong, but, and it's not saying if you, do this, I'm going to give you this, but it's saying, here's where you were weak, and this is kind of why we couldn't put enough check Please, marks I made, I made it unclear. through the procurement. We don't, have, we don't have currently that formal process. The, current, the new procurement process has a formal process expressly for that, um, and was, I think the first reading of that was passed November 18th or something. That's, that's the whole point, is that, yes, we have a process for doing that going forward. Okay, but well, that's what I'm saying. So right now, that doesn't necessarily exist, but that's what you're in the stages of. That's correct. Stay, stay for happen. the second reading. Just, just because the, the requirement, or it's not a requirement, doesn't mean it didn't happen in the past. If, if anyone submitting a proposal didn't win and they asked why, I've always been taught that these summaries are given, and that it's without, it, you, you tell the truth. This is, this is, this is where you scored low, this is where you scored well. The summaries are given if they call and request the summaries, we absolutely give it to them. Okay, so that is something that is open and shared. I always have to. Okay. This is very educational for me, thank you. So, uh, so basically our local companies then did not meet enough of the criteria that you were looking for in your proposal for the Edison Arena. Well, the, the proposals were different, and the one that was done by the people who've done 300 of those was incredibly complete and complete. And the fact is, they had 300 ex ex successes. And the local company had one that they'd done in Winnipegosis, um, and, and while it may have worked out successfully, it, it didn't have all of the detail that the other one had that explained why they did each of the pieces. So it was much easier to, and again, we had. I think a week and a half, 10 days from the time that we sort of got them to the time we had to have a decision because the timeline was they had to start by a certain date if they didn't. And there were other, there was a contra contractor from Montreal, there was one from Winnipeg, there was a local one from Winnipeg, four, I don't remember, there were, there were three or four anyway. And, and we went through all of them in incredible detail and they were vastly different. But the, the one that was most complete and guaranteed that we'd have ice and ice on an ongoing basis without any real risk going forward was the one we selected. Because that was, that was the, the issue. If we had saved thirty thousand dollars and ended up without ice, I don't think anybody in town would have been thanking us. No, and I, I agree with you there. I I'm not please understand, I'm not sitting here saying that local companies should be given priority over anybody else. But if it's coming down to your little check boxes are all marked and it's really just down to a discrepancy of within five percent, then I'm saying, okay, so why are we really like 
what does that five like five percent or less amount to? And not just looking at that particular bit of tender, but looking at also the impact. So if we're talking a service like recycling, for example, which is something that is ongoing, so they cost maybe five percent more up front, but what is that going to do for the economy in the long run when we're looking at creating jobs locally, maybe possibly even replacing the eight that got lost with the lions having to fold, give up, whatever it was, but also keeping that local tax dollars, local eight, possibly more or less people doing the job and getting the job done. So to me, 5% more when we're looking at the overall economy for the town and the potential for keeping us going and thriving, to me, kind of should be weighed in there as well. If everybody is kind of, you're checking all the boxes right, and it's really just down to that dollar value, but what's the long run picture? Well, I guess a couple of things. For one thing, it's illegal, as, as Mr. Kroll pointed out, and they'll, you'd have to take that up with the provincial government. They're the signatories to the New West Partnership. Um, but secondly, as Councillor Gray pointed out earlier, local businesses do have a, a, an edge when it comes to pricing and the fact that they don't have the overhead of coming in here that some other companies do. So if they are 5% high, well, they have some explaining to do in the fact that their costs are, how can some how can someone come in here and beat you when they have additional costs that you're not going to have? Why are, why are you 5% high? You should be 5% low. For, you, you don't have hotels, you don't have meals, you, you're located here. So right right off the hop, they have the advantage of being local. Their, their price should be better. Fair enough. I, I honestly can't answer that question for you just because I'm not in that type of business. So. I don't know why a local company, other than maybe that they have to source their product from out of town, like we're talking, making a building structure, they're obviously not necessarily getting their materials right here locally. So maybe it's their provider that's providing for them that brings that cost difference. So I don't know. I can't honestly answer that for you. But so what you're telling me now then is basically if all the boxes are checked and they're all equal, it's basically looking at the dollar value, it's illegal to choose the person with the higher bid. Yeah, so yeah. it's illegal to do West Partnership uh, because of all the Western provinces are in. Okay. Uh, and for its local preference. So uh, it's for $75,000 or more for services. Mm -hmm. so, so for instance, picking up the recycling. And for construction, it's $200,000. So. If you're given local preference without considering the, you know, the local preference was the lowest bidder, then that's all good and fine. But if they're the higher bidder and you select them just because they're the local people, there's up to $5 million in fines for. Okay, and that. there's a set limit on that though? Like, yeah, it's all in there. I've okay. highlighted it in the yellow for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cool. So we're just going to have to wrap up here pretty soon, but I'll let Councillor Moore go. Um, I appreciate what you're saying. It's not the, the tendering, it, it's, a, it's a fine line, and we all would like to award contracts, especially like municipal contracts to local um, businesses. Unfortunately, we have to look beyond just the one singular contract. We have to look at other. If we get into a practice, which Mr. Cole is um, a little bit, it's illegal. You're going to all of a sudden end up with just no competitiveness from other communities or other contractors bidding in to keep the competitive process going. But it also could turn around and backfire is that other communities which would go is that, well, they're from Swan River, we're going to hire. So we have a lot of businesses within the valley that do a lot of their business outside the valley or outside of Thomas Swan River. So it's like if we shut the door on them, other communities can shut the door on our our own contractors and there's not enough work within the valley for certain contractors if there's a number of them so it, it's it's a balancing act and we have to follow the legislations and the, the acts that are out there so um would we love like personally i would love to hire the local contractors but we have to follow the rules and regulations that are there and it has to be the competitive bid because it is tax dollars and when you start dealing with half a million to a million dollars, 5% is a big number. 
And we all know this year what our taxes went up just to maintain the core services. So when you, on a million dollars of 5%, that's a long ways. Exactly. So, yes, we would like to have a local guy do the million dollar bid, but once a year, we have to, throughout the whole year through the tax process, we have to explain that to the, the individuals to, that are paying for it, the, the local tax payers. And 5% on a million dollars is a, is a big chunk of money, which this year people are not happy about. No, I hear so, a lot of that too. So exactly. We'll so, like on, so, so on the uh, recycling contract, which the discussion is, it's close to, it's, it's a six digit, it's a significant number. So 5% on that is still, it's not as big as the million dollar one, but it would still add a significant chunk to the taxes to afford that so it's like I'm very sympathetic to the local people but they need to be competitive and they need to follow the same rules as everybody else like we have legislation and like we assist them where we can but we can't give them for say preferential achievement that will get us in trouble with the legislation where we can get fined and stuff like that so that's what I do appreciate all the answers and you guys actually providing the answers. It was very educational for me. The only thing I am leaving here still a little uh, where I personally would like to see or hear some improvement is just that communication line. So if you are, whether it's at a committee level or not, if you are talking with the local business and you may or may not have left the impression that, hey, we're tabling this, we'll pick it up at another time. Give the common courtesy of at least, whether it's at the management or committee level, picking up the phone and saying, okay, we're moving ahead. There'll be a tender in the paper. Please watch for it. That message is duly dedicated and from my committee for sure. Yeah, because I just think that it's fair. Because if you possibly left it on the table that we will get back to you, Let's be honest, we all kind of get busy, we get, life gets in the way, you know, and things happen and maybe you kind of drop the ball and forget about it and the next thing you know it's come and gone and you've lost out. So giving the benefit of the doubt, maybe as a town, as a council, we can kind of do our due diligence in on a communication level. I agree that yes, whether you're local, out of town, everybody needs to follow the same rules. We need to follow them. And there shouldn't be preferential treatment either way. But I, that's the one that's still kind of eating at me. It's just that I'm a big person on communication. <laughs> and that's, but I get it. Thank you for answering all my questions. It was very educational. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank, you for, thank you for coming out. And did Pat have anything to add? Oh, yes, she does. It's about two months away from our uh, snow time. How's that to uh, snow removal policy and bylaw parking bags going? I have some drafts that we'll be bringing forward from the committee. Oh, really? Forth. So um, it's being reviewed. Is that bylaw? Ban, parking ban being reviewed as well? It's part of the, cons the consideration. Okay. That I, 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 like I can't comment on if it's going to be in there. It's part of the consideration to bring to the committee as a whole. To Quite frankly, with the, the way it's currently worded, it might as well not be in there because the ban is in effect when the equipment is not out on the road. So it's essentially useless. No bets, but if you've got a ban for overnight parking and the plows aren't out until the morning, <laughs> What's the point in having a parking bag? <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. And again, You're welcome. Thank you. And if you want to stick around for the procurement uh, meeting, of the second meeting of the procurement process or bylaw, then you're more than welcome. I would love to, so, but I think I'm going to have to catch it on the video replay. <laughs> but I am going to the, do the document is online, too, so you can read over it as well. Because I'm going to be watching for that one, because Council Grace has got me uh, intrigued. I want to see it. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Okay, so uh, moving on, communications uh, 6.1.
result of the minutes of the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District meeting held on July the 24th, 2019, be accepted as information. Moved by Councillor Mentoni, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? Against? It's carried. Resolved that the town of Swan River provide funding to the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2020, in the amount of $13,441.82. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. I guess as we talked about in our uh Committee meeting last week, in the nicest way possible, the minister basically told us to go take a hike. But he wasn't entertaining any of our uh, our arguments. Um, I I don't want to have to do this, but we have you know between three hundred thousand and four hundred thousand dollars of shared service agreements to be negotiated. I would hate to, as an act of good faith, we could vote for this to go in for, for a year, negotiate those agreements. If we can at least maintain the status quo on them or improve our lot, it'd be a success in my mind. But I, I would hate for not for having thumbed their nose at them for, with this to have, not, have end up with nothing. Councilor Mario, did you raise your hand? Um, I guess I, I understand what Councillor Gloria is saying for sure, but I guess is that the is that the way that the, the council wants to go? Because the same question is going to come up for the airport commission as well, too, in terms of in terms of how how the levy was what came came to be. So I just want that to be a question or an answer in everybody's mind on which way we're going to be voting for this and if that does come up we will most likely approve that that way for the year for it to be renegotiated <clears throat> so i just wanted that to bring that to attention council um i understand and read the letter from the minister um i personally disagree with it um, but as previously discussed last week at the committee of poll and right now, um, for the amount of dollar value that we're disagreeing with and we're going to end as a, about to enter into negotiations with the municipalities, um, to put those onto a sour note right off the hop before um, they even get started um, as an act of good faith. I'm willing to move this forward. Um, but also, as we will come, uh, Councilor Tony just mentioned about with the airport commission. Um, the airport commission is not based on the dollar amount. The concern was it was based on the ability or the ability of the commission itself to set the rates that are outside the contract that was agreed to by the councils. So um, that's similar, but it's a different type of argument than this was being because. So. Okay. Further discussion, Councillor Gray. I acknowledge the wisdom of the comments of my colleagues, Councillor Delorier and Councillor. Having said that, um, my question is this: How much more sour and note can we be on um, both Manitowas? Bozeman and Swan Valley lands have behaved like bullies um, in every negotiation we've had so far. If we don't get our way, we're not going to play. Um, not with argument or reason, not with this is the basis upon which we're going to assert this, not with with even a trade-off, not even with a principle that says, um, 
well, you guys should concede this because it's small dollars and we have other dollars that we're going to contribute and we agree with you philosophically that we have to work together. That has not been their position. Their position is we can put on Sam. So, um, I, I, my personality is not one that takes well to being pushed. I need to, my reaction is to push back. Um, and um, I find it difficult to I do lots of negotiations where we where we concede small points because what's the point? Like is it worth spending three days in court over a ten thousand dollar dispute in a family matter? Of course it's not. And so I'm, I'm, I have some affinity for the view that this is not a big deal. On the other hand, but candidly, if, if you expect to have fights about all of the big things, then why would you concede the small things? So um, I'm, I'm probably going to abstain. I, I'm going to think that we should defer until we see whether or not there's good faith on the other pieces before we agree. Um, but uh, I know there's some urgency, and so I, I uh, first day I don't think the ministers followed the rules. I don't think he's passed an order in council. Um, he may be intending to do it, um, but he uh, that presumes he's going to be elected. And he's going to be appointed the minister uh, again. Um, but they have not passed an order in council to change it to the presumptive level. The fact that he has responded without considering that is. Astounding to me, like at least I'm not aware of an order in council. Mr. Crowe, maybe you can help me, but as I checked and I don't recall seeing an order in council. And the requirement of the act is that if he's going to set rates other than the presumptive rates, that there'll be an order in council. So um, I appreciate he wanted to have um, unanimity, and I appreciated that he wants to have. It doesn't want to risk losing Swan Valley West. On the other hand, it would seem to me absurd that Swan Valley West, who has is by far the largest winner in all of the work, we got back what we put in. They got back the three, the, the three times amount that the province put in. They in Minnetona shared that money. We didn't get that money. So they're 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 not pulling out when they're getting more than three times what they put in. And they can block all they want. And a lot of folks are in Nobody, nobody, nobody pulls out when they're going to lose three and a half times what they're putting in. Like I said, I, 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 I don't like the approach that was taken by within these bodies. I, I think we raised good points. I raised some other councillors raised some of the Swan Valley Watershed meeting where we went over our reasons for saying it. We didn't have even an argument response. We just well we decided this. I mean and I have laid my points on that. I'm not gonna if you beat a dead horse long enough someone will think you killed it. So I'm gonna just leave it alone. <laughs> Council Mario I don't disagree with Councillor Gray's comments. Like it, he's 100% accurate on it. Um, but from what I understand, like we're going to enter this here. We can amend the resolution that it's it's for a one-year thing and uh, go from there. Or we have an exit clause that we can exercise if they choose to continue that thought process of how they want to come up with numbers in the shared services and then we can exercise the I think it's a 90 day exit clause that if you if you don't want to do that then we're, we're out like, but we we held out we were the big boys on the block um, going offering out the olive branch going we want to negotiate you with these partners in good faith for value dollar is what the commitments are um, and if they choose not to do that, when we enter that, then we exercise our right with the, the exit clause and we're out. So. Councilor Gray. It is with regret that I remind my colleagues 
that we made a better offer than that. Our offer was that we would voluntarily contribute the extra money for two years while we worked it out that the that the formula was a, would be would be what it was, which is the actual amount that's pres prescribed in the legislation that, they, that our council would voluntarily contribute its extra six thousand dollars for two years while we worked out what the mechanisms would be. We we really couldn't be any more fair to them than that. And what, one of the things I was offended about was that they simply figuratively, not literally, but figuratively spit on our face and said, too bad. Take your six grand and forget it. You're in or you're out. Like I said, I, I was pretty offended by this. I, I, but I understand the reason, I think, even if the woods want nothing, I know where we have to go. I just, I personally, conflicted. <coughs> I guess, you know, Councilor Gray sums it up pretty good in, in the fact that we, we, this may have do nothing for us either, either way. We may, I, the only thing I'm really struggling with is when we have to increase taxes by $350,000 on, and someone said, well, couldn't, couldn't you guys have done anything? And, and, and if this, but, but he's probably right in the fact that this is not going to do anything anyways. I. Let's do it. I'm really struggling, so. Okay. They, they are asking us to give a, an answer, obviously, at the time the clock is ticking, and, and the province is asking to, to get this all done up. So this is why this is on the on the agenda tonight. So 14 years to September the 10th. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> Civil <laughs> servants are pushing us around. Well, nobody can do it. September the 10th, September the 11th. So, anyway. It's voting. What's that? You're not voting? I, I'm going to abstain. Okay, I, I feel that I accept and agree that we have to do this because it's only $6,000. You know what? I'll vote in favor of it. I know we have to do it for six thousand dollars. It is. We can't lose sight of the fact that it's only six thousand dollars. But it is manifestly wrong. Did you want to comment? No, I was just going to call for a two-minute break. Okay. Then we'll we'll wait for the vote then, and we'll yeah. uh, we'll have a two-minute break. So on the um, the resolution. Um, We've had a lengthy debate about it, so I guess we're ready to call the questions. So I'll ask all in favor, <clears throat> against. Okay. Let's wait. All right. <clears throat> Result of the letter dated 8th of August 6, 2019, from Massive Call Hardy Company, Chartered Professional Accountant, 2018 audit. Planning letter be received. Moved by Councillor Tony, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Can I just ask? Oh, yeah. Sure, go ahead. Is it, is it required by the Municipal Act that we pass motion to receive things? Can it not be just reflected that we've received them? Oh, you usually receive minutes from <clears throat> all committees and outside committees. You receive minutes. Okay. Uh, you don't really need to receive, I suppose it's an audit letter. <laughs> Uh, a lot of official stuff happens through the audit letter, so maybe it's best to receive it. Okay. All right, I just... Okay. It's all good. Okay. Whatever. 7.1. Result of the Superintendent of the Works Report be received. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Questions? Mr. Poole? None? Any questions? Councillor Morio? Um, it's a little early in the year to start the uh, hydrant flushing, and it seems like we're a month ahead of schedule on that. Or? Um, well, for a few years we did it in the fall, but we sure ran into problems with uh, the leads and, and plugging up the storm drains, and we have to send extra crews to the because we don't want the flushing crew to stop to do that. So even last year we, we did it in August, and it was pretty successful. So, uh, 
So, and then we have some fire hydrants that we have to put antifreeze down after, and then so uh, we, that that'll happen at a later date. Okay. So I know the fire chief expressed his concerns today on yeah. on that, but uh, the, the glycol and the fire hydrants happens. In yeah. yeah, that's two separate processes, though. Perfect. Council Wyatt. I uh, appreciate the explanation, the information rather sent out relative to the uh, airport being down for an extended period of time. I guess the bottom line in my mind, how long were the pilots told, I believe that NOTAM is a, a term that explains it, that they could or could not fly in and out of Stone River Airport? Was it three weeks, four weeks? Uh, the Well, NOTAMs are, I don't know they're not... They're not uh, just in cases, or like you put it. You, you set up your no town when when you're doing your project. Okay, so the, on the how long was that no town up? Was it up for the length of the project, three to four weeks? Therefore, hypothetically, nobody could fly in and out. Fifteen days. Fifty, 50 and, and and the pilot should have known that. It was a total of fifteen days. Yeah. Okay, well, in the fifteen days. Uh, Air ambulance stars could come in because they're helicopter, hypothetically, if they ever came here. But the air ambulance couldn't have come in in those 15 well, days. If the pilot decided to land and cross here, he very well could have, but that is 100% up to the pilot. Is it, is it logical to say they probably wouldn't because of the length of that airstrip? I don't know about a pilot. That's grass. Okay. You can answer that. Um, so there's a council one telling me that I know this council one can answer that. There's no uh, our cross trip is too short for the current air ambulances that are using that. I told that the life flight needs the, the long um, so it couldn't strip. Strip. It couldn't strip. So 15 days we were without air ambulance. Uh, That's right. Okay. Incorrect. Okay, Stars Air Ambulance was available. Could land. The, the helicopter yeah, could land but not the plane. Right. So the helicopter would have had to land in Dauphin to gas up before it come here? That's all dependent on the weather. Okay. Because depending if they have, they can make it here on one full tank of gas, but if they have headwinds, they may have to stop and top up to get it here, refuel, and then use the tailwind going back, vice versa. Because we're, Swan River is right on the fringe of their range. So, um, but there's also in EMS and PMH, there's backup plants for the runway, just like in the winter when it's iced over or whatever, that there's contingency plants for backup airstrips to be utilized, which were all reviewed and ready to be put in there as we well know as so, so what I've heard is the plane couldn't land, which is backup for the helicopter. The planes that are currently in use could not land. That's the ones that we use. I guess as, as uh, Mr. Poole understands more than I, I just find that with planned as a five day thing turned out to be 15 days and for the case of the air ambulance with the planes we presently use which is the ones we should talk about uh, hopefully in the future will be planes that can land on this item uh, that concerns me a lot and, and it's nothing to do with you uh, Mr. Poole I understand that but well, I hope that doesn't happen again. But maybe we have no control over it. No, the work has like it's not the work has to be done, right? So you know, we we use the contractors. You know, if we didn't have, you know, if we didn't end at the right time, we lost those three days right at the end for the sweeping. The, the contractor is actually finished, so, so that takes it down to twelve days. Then he lost three and a half days to rain, so you're already at eight and a half days to. They worked, and then he had two paver breakdowns. So it really, he only worked six and a half days. So could I ask you to forward that information that you shared with council to the pilot who's on our airport commission? I don't want to forward the stuff from, from our council, our exchanges, and uh, it, it, that would perhaps uh, help him understand it more because he'll explain it better than I would if you want to fold it. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That should be public information that we didn't work. Yes, so. Well, after tonight, I would believe it's a public document that can be shared with that will document can be shared with the entire commission. No, I don't think it's a public document, but I'm sorry. It was a public document. Council went Mine are, are not. Well, can it. we get that one answer first of all, please? Okay. Can that stuff be forwarded yes, to the public? Anything in a public meeting is public knowledge. 
all the documents that are handed in or public knowledge. So that, that could be forwarded. Would you yeah. do that? Thank you very much. I can get his contact through me. Pardon? I can get his contact through you. You can send it to me as a single document. I can forward it. Mm-hmm. Mr. Pooley can send it to myself, the chair of the airport commission. I'll be more than happy to send it out to that pilot. It's probably a better idea. Okay. <laughs> CC. Yeah. Thank you. Your turn. Am I I'm good to go? You're good to go. <laughs> um, two things that I see so far, complaints you have here, Mr. Poole, on dust control and trees. Can you just share what what you're talking about there? Where, which dust in which areas? And uh, trees, if there's something that we should be concerned about. Yeah, the dust control issues on, on Willow Drive. Uh, yeah, we, we admit that was missed on the magnesium chloride application, so we're using granular uh, calcium and water to get that going. There's still some showing from last year, but we're going to calcium it anyways, so that owner is happy as soon as that's done, which should be this week. And then the trees, uh, there was a complaint on 8th Avenue North, 100 block, we're running a uh, very large I don't know what kind they are, but they're our trees, they're in the boulevard, and they're rotting and dying, and we have plans to move And that's just the age of trees, there's nothing, no issues with pesticides, anything like that that we're aware of? It's just the age of trees, and yeah. public safety. Um, the other question I have is the survey quotes for Valley View Dry, or Valley View Road, sorry, um, how is that? moving along can you share any information there uh nothing that i've received back but bulk and kochiki pollock and Ray atlas surveys and richmond surveys have been contacted and we're just waiting to hear back from you know what they can do for us presumably and hopefully this year so that builder can you know, get underway if they choose to do so okay. um i think that's all i had thank you Mr. Green, did you have anything? Yeah, but, um, uh, when's the last time we paved the airport? Two last week. Councilor Light, you're out of order. 2004, I believe. So it's 15 years ago. Yeah. So it's a problem every 15 years. So the problem itself isn't a problem. I mean, it was. It's done. So what, what are we going to do? About it? Um, there are a couple of other things though, that I was concerned with. It's a process thing. Uh, if you read the complaint, it's that he became aware that there was going to be rebating in early July, and then there were delays when it was started. So he wasn't bringing plane in because it could be well trapped here. Um, in that period of time. I don't think your letter will respond to that. I, I think the whole point is that we have to think through how we do that communication so that it's clear um, what will happen. That's that's not something that we should decide today. I know not much, as we were hearing over simple ad hoc decisions and we just fly off our handle and make a quick decision. But there is, we should talk about the process, not for the next airport, because it won't matter to me. I will be well into my dotage by then, but I'll be as old as Councillor White. But um, but for just an ongoing process of when those things happen, how we notify people, um, we should consider that in terms of our communication plan. Um, the, the second that was a concern to me was the responsing. That is that, that he made requests and it, it took a couple of days or a few days to get back to him. Um, that's um, not something. I, I think that's also part of our communication plan and how that occurs because even if you get back and say, look, we're considering it, we'll get back to you, it's really important on those kind of complaints because they get out of hand quite quickly um, and I mean, that particular individual is very calm and, and, and measured and so that's not good. But there are other people who are less so and that kind of delay can cause a significant problem. So that's the second piece we should talk about at some point. The last is in terms of the, the, the contractor, I'm just baffled by some of it because we were supposed to start on a certain date that it was delayed because he couldn't get here or something. Um, do we not have penalties or anything in our agreements? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just asking. We wait in the future? No, it's early. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, of course they don't. They, they just won't come. We paid for that in the next bidder. We were $200,000. Okay. 
Okay. So it is what it is. Yes. Okay. Glad I answered. <laughs> I'm in favor of saving 200 grand. Is that right? It is. Okay. Um, the RFP for the pool that uh, it says sending out is it's, that it hasn't been sent yet? No, it's currently on works and on our okay. website. Um, did you, uh, at the last council meeting, did you have a conversation with, or put anything in there with regards to how we want the top of removed? Yes. Okay. So capture that, okay, that's all I need to know. So we've, we've created a contracts um, section in the government slide out on our website, and the RFP is in that contract section. <coughs> that's circular No. Nope. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, moving on to 7.2, council reports. We'll start with Councilor Gray. I've got some, I don't remember what they were. So, Do you want me to come back to him? Sure. Okay. It doesn't make any difference. Councilor Lyon. Do you want me to come back to him? No, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm working. Uh, I just want to uh, in the floor to thank uh, Mr. Kroll for the insert into the tax uh, releases. So we think that's uh, helped a lot of people, alleviated some concerns. Uh, I met with uh, Premont Health recently and uh, still lobbying to improve health in the valley and specifically uh, talked about our clinic, possible clinic. Thank you. Uh, I've had a request indirectly from the uh, the Gladwell and Campers and Cottage Owners Association, I'm not sure if it's appropriate to bring up here, but what do we do with our old firefighting equipment, the old, old boots and pants, which are not appropriate preps for a professional team? And they may be sitting over here in the building. Could they go to an amateur group at uh, Weldon well, Glad Lake to stick in their little homemade firefighting thing? I believe they did. I just don't know which ones. I'm thinking it's the one in the valley, though. Our neighboring municipalities, I believe. Okay. Could you Not check sure. on that and let me know? If there's, if there's anything left over, uh, Glad Weldon would probably like to do that. Uh, the, the group up there has uh, built a building and they've got a array for some firefighting equipment, a couple four thousand dollars worth. But they said it'd be nice if they had some boots or jackets in there that might be able to be used. And a uh, safety issue relative to uh, where. Uh, Lori and Leona Monroe live over there. I think you probably know about it, uh, Mr. Poole. They're concerned that there's a, a large spruce tree that's causing access visibility issues, and whether the tree, whether the town could uh, remove that tree. Yep. What? I, I just uh, bring it up to you again, and then I know I've covered my tail. Yeah, we've done the site distance calculations, and it is, it's within them. It has to be removed. Pardon? The tree will be removed. Perfect. <clears throat> Do you have a, a schedule in that? Uh, this fall. Perfect. And the town is going to remove that tree? Perfect, thank you. Uh, your, your Worship, we're going to send a letter of support to the safe house ladies. I'm not sure if you've got that onto your list yet, oh. or your activity yet. That's been done? No, but I'll get it done. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's it for me, thank you. Councilor Gray, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, Somebody, one thing I, I just can't remember what it was about. You know, I'll say it and then maybe somebody will, will think what it was. Um, one of the things that I've been approached with by a number of people was um, additional benches around town. We have quite a number of seniors who walk and the distances to places where there are benches. Downtown, we're actually pretty good, but if you're coming from out by our area or you're coming from that direction or even over here, it's a fair distance to downtown. And so the one that was mentioned was uh, by the um, fairgrounds on a, where old Kelsey grocery used to be. I don't remember what, that's third, whatever it is. Um, then the, there would be a useful place because people, as they get older, they walk and they want to be able to have a rest and it's, it's quite a long walk. So in, for next year's planning, can we consider what we could do for setting up proper um, stations for people when they're walking. Um, my particular pet peeve, and I know we did, I missed it in the budget, but is the audiovisual piece because uh, I hate missing meetings. I, I, I am, am more than willing to participate, but I need to. Uh, we need to have it in some way that can be done. So can we 
possibly at some point see what we can do, whether it's whether we have to defer to next year. I, I understand that we may not have budget this year, but if we can find some budget this year, that's a, a huge deal for me. But if I want to leave one legacy, it's that we actually have moved into, well, maybe not the 21st century, but at least the 19th century. <laughs> I have Stan Polinski and somebody raised something with Stan. I don't remember what it was. It said we, doesn't matter. I'll ask the people to ask me. There was an issue about um, sidewalks, the same as always, and I'm sure you've got it on your plan in terms of all of the, there's some uneven sidewalks. And we have a very long list of hazards. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I'm going to come back to RISE. Settlement services, we have it on the agenda and we're going to talk about a more recent meeting. And I, I'm going to ask for direction from you, your worshiper, from my colleagues, as to whether we want to go mid camera on some of that. Um, but on settlement services, we had a fantastic meeting the other day at David Minish's. Um, well, it wasn't a meeting, it was a dinner actually. And we were supposed to have a meeting, we didn't. Um, but it, it, Ryan, uh, the settlement service is doing amazing stuff. We're, we're going to, we, we may or may not be getting Thompson. We have, we have the administration for the pod group going on here now because we've gotten a huge grant, incredible work being done. Uh, there's going to be another event in September. I, I will get you the exact dates and so on. I'm going to encourage all of you to come. It is a fat and to bring out as many newcomers as you know, because we had, I don't know, 30 people, but there are like 300 or 400, well, well there's more than that. There's 20%, so 600 newcomers in town. And really, um, we are doing pretty well in terms of integrating newcomers and and, and making um, people feel uh, welcome to the community. I, I think I'm really, there are things I'm not so proud of this long river and there are things I'm incredibly proud of. That's one of the things I'm incredibly proud of. Anyway, I think settlement service has done a fantastic job. I, I can send you the minutes. We don't do a lot of, of motions though. I mean, they just do a lot of work. Um, there's something about the credit card. The strategic planning thing, I'm, I'm not there on the back here. We can't as well. So we need, we can maybe talk about the dates or you can go without me or whatever. I want to come back to RISE. Uh, we had a surprise attendee at our last RISE meeting. Um, the reeve of the arm of the hospital of and because it impacts um, intermunicipal relations, it, it may be that the discussion of RISE should be adjourned to, to um, um, the in-camera piece. I don't know if Council would tell you that. I, I certainly don't have any problem um, with what I'm going to say. It'll come as no surprise to anybody. But um, we do have negotiations going on, as we've been reminded, and I think it may not be in our interest to be... It's in everyone here's interest to know our thoughts candidly, and putting them out candidly may not be in our interest in, in terms of ongoing relations. That's fair. I think we can add that to it. But I'm just thinking that, that issue might be best. Yeah, I think you're right. Done in a different way. Yeah. That's it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Dore. Uh, the only, nothing to report on, but the only request I have is uh, if uh, Mr. Poole could give us a timeline on uh, when we might be receiving the report from Public Works with regards to a resolution that was passed a number of months ago with regards to traffic around 13th and 3rd and what might be done there and, you, you know, I guess what your opinion of the situation is or what your department's opinion of the situation is. So I guess when, if any time this fall, whenever I, I, yeah. I wasn't pushing it because I knew you had lots of other duties. So Yeah, um, I'm guessing like the October committee. The whole okay, excellent. That's it for me. Okay. Councilman Tony. Um, RISE, I guess the first part with RISE, I guess we are putting that into camera. So the rest of that information, I guess we can just discuss at that time, which takes a big chunk of my, my time away, but that's fine. Um, I know that in our last committee of a whole that we talk, talked about um, bringing that curfew bylaw back to rescind, but I don't see it on today's agenda. Um, so possibly the next one. And just in regards to the graffiti bylaw, if that wouldn't, I think we talked about that one coming back and just having some discussion about it, which I don't see on the agenda either. And just in regards to that, thank you, Mr. Poole and your crew for cleaning up the graffiti that was left by the chamber office, more specifically on the swan. So thank you for that. Um, I 
also Third Street North, just in regards to curbing and the manhole on that on that strip from in front of why not Johnny's in this dental center there. Um, I know that we did the town did some work a couple of years ago in the back alley area, but if you could just have a look at that, I think that that manhole is starting to sink and it's. I'm not sure. I'm no no street or street guy. So if you can have a look at that, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to thank you once again, all of management and office staff for some of the issues in regards to taxes and things like that. Um, an anonymous donor brought in some treats for them, so I think that helped as well. Um, in terms of benches, Mr. Gray along streets, I think that maybe council, if we did approve it, could sell advertising on those and that'd be a way to to pay for them there'd be nothing more than on that corner to have a, a law office um, bench there so one, one way to, to um, we have a contract with a law firm they'd probably be pleased to support the town i i would agree with that <laughs> absolutely um also i just uh, want to talk about or waiting for that report from oss in terms of, of what that looks like yeah. um, i think that i am hearing a little bit of, of great things about it but i think those great reviews are coming with a price and i want to make sure not make sure but i want to look at what that looks like um also there is um, a campaign coming forward um, with a shop local piece in it in our local newspaper um, and I'm not sure what that looks like in terms of what the town might want to do anything of support in that and I don't know if we do or not so that's up to management but just in regards to you know the two ladies that were speaking about it um, and I know that we do do a lot of shop locally shop shopping local with that it might be a good opportunity but like I say I don't know what that looks like so hopefully you guys can have a look at it if you like. Um, that's all I have on my list other than RISE, which we'll be talking about it in camera. Council Morio. Um, I've had no formal meetings um, the last two weeks. I've just been working on um, some number of research with the community safety officer program and the bylaw enforcement uh, stuff to bring to the community as a whole. Uh, for that, so and what our options would be for enforcement regarding either um, the municipal enforcement bylaw or um, provincial summons defense act option. So, um, putting uh, some research on that and getting some stuff and bring a report to the committee as a whole where we can decide which option is best for what the town can pursue. So. Okay, thank you. <coughs> I like the uh, bench idea. I'm thinking communities in Bloom could get on board with that and uh, get the benches put and maybe we could get a grant for some more big pots and put them with the benches. ICAP grant funding is accepting proposal right now for stuff just like that. Cool, right on. Okay. Um, Atkinson Sports Excellence is having a barbecue Thursday as it's a closing out sale until the new owner takes it on. So you're all invited. The proceeds go to uh, Special Olympics. <coughs> you know who the new owner is, right? <coughs> I'm not telling you. Um, the museum is hosting their Harvest Festival this weekend. They're having a dance Friday night and the all the fun stuff on Sunday, including a supper. So if you're out in the boat, come to the museum. And um, I spent five days in Alberta and had a great time. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And the plug that you made for your, your business there. So. <laughs> you, know, you noticed that. that eh? was under the council's reports. Um, one was OSS. Did we send something out either in the tax notices or in the last water bills about not putting your ISS out in the street unless it's full? For commercial, for residential, it's a flat rate. For commercial, it's every lift we get. Oh, it's not for residential. Okay, I thought it was residential too. 
because I've been telling everybody I could see, don't take it out unless it's full. Hey, I've been holding mine back till it's full. Exactly. So, me too. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't we do it? Well, because there's no figure trade. Yeah. But still using energy, stop, starts, blah, blah. Same Green them. team, carbon dioxide, stop, it's great. Right. 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 <laughs> and the other thing is, yeah, not free. It, it's about cost. The other is, uh, I'm concerned about the, the fireman's equipment thing. Uh, I, I understood we were replacing it because it was expired and not able to be used. Uh, I think the idea of selling that to another municipality or giving it to be volunteers, I mean, it would be bad enough to have trained people going in with equipment that was past the, to give it to somebody who thinks it's going to be perfectly fine and turn out it's bad, that would be brutal. I, I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm not much in favor of that. If it's passed, it's passed. Get rid of it. It's, it should be destroyed. It's not. It's it's standard procedure for uh, uh, fire firehouses and, and ambulance houses across North America. Uh, hand it off to the poorer cousins. Oh my God. It's There's a lot of towns that wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for someone else giving it to them. Oh, well, Even though, you know, well, technically yes, it's yes. run out. Okay, well, here's my problem. Minitonas and, and Swan Valley West cut taxes. If they need four shoot suits that cost $6,000 each or whatever they had, we had to pay for them, then they should pay for them. Yeah. I, I can't imagine sending my my own relatives or, or friends or people I grew up with into dangerous situations saying, here's the stuff that's no good for our people, but you go wear it and on the off chance it works, good on you. And if it doesn't, well, we'll see you some other place. I, I just think that's bizarre. Like, maybe it's usual practice, and, but I really want to talk about that at some point in the future because I, I just think it's wrong. It's, it's like me going and saying, "Well, I've got some cheese whiz that's two years out of date from the store, but you know what? I'll put it in the hand. I'll put it out for the for the uh, uh, donations. What the heck is that called? Food, 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 food bank. You know, yeah, no, I don't think so. I'm going to try not poison the other people. Just because we're not going to poison ourselves. <laughs> Same thing. Because I'm just going to have to assume." that the expectations of a municipal entity like a community or a town relative to their firefighting equipment are of some degree of rigor, or significant rigor, I would hope. But they don't know. we as a bunch of volunteers don't have the same expectation nor the same rules. And it might be sufficient for us, but certainly not with government as rules. Those rules don't necessarily apply to somebody else. That's not my objection, but sure, let's, let's just deal with it in another discussion. Can I, can I suggest that management look into the legalities and what our liability is if we do do something with that, um, so that we don't expose ourselves to a liability issue where, as we determine something that a uh, protective equipment that is now past its best before date, um, because with the WCB legislations and things like that right now, um, Last thing we want to do is just like with the procurement processes, there's rules and regulations we need to follow that uh, we shouldn't be, and we feel sympathetic to the volunteers that don't have it, but we give them a, a jacket or a firefighter suit that they think they're safe in, but they may or may not be. And they says, well, we got it from the town of Swan River and now there's a liability issue, even though, um, like I know from communities that stuff, that agreement, is agreed upon when it's first on there, but that jacket sits now for another 10 years in that shack that's never looked at, never services or um, maintained is now even less. And someone puts it on thinking that they're fully safe to go fight a cottage fire um, or and get injured on it. And then WCB comes back, well, where did that jacket come from? Well, we got it from the town of Swan River. They, they thought it was totally fine or whatever, because the story changes. So I just suggest that management looks at the uh, legalities of that with the NFPA uh, stuff. I, I, not just the legality, I, I, for, for me it's even more because even if we could get escape some form of civil or criminal liability, I would feel sick if somebody wore one of the jackets we gave them and was injured because they thought that it was safe and it wasn't. I, I, would be, I already have sleepless nights and I just don't need any more. Personally, I'm more comfortable giving a, a donation or something like that to buy serviceable equipment versus giving yeah. stuff that's not serviceable. I agree. Like equipments like what our SCBAs we did like, there was still life, serviceable life in it that we sold on, we tendered on it. 
but we're replacing stuff here that we are now determining that they've reached their end of service. If we have some that they still have two years or whatever, knock yourself out. But if we, if we already deemed it as for the NAPA standard that's no longer serviceable, we shouldn't be giving that or donating it to. It's like in my world, when, the, when that, it's not serviceable, even though it looks brand new, it goes to the incinerator. Exactly, I agree. So. Okay, I know you don't. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and and uh, I agree. Actually, when when I did come up, I was kind of thinking the same thing. I thought like it's no good for us, but we're going to give it away. So I think it's a good recommendation to get uh, management to maybe take a little bit of a closer look at that and make sure that we don't get ourselves into some kind of a predicament that's going to end up costing us money or some, or somebody's life. <clears throat> Uh, I don't really have much more to report than what has already been said, but moving into the fall, lots of things are going to start to happen and move quickly again because the end of the year is coming close again. So um, it's crazy how fast it goes, but for us, or for one of my committees, the Indigenous Relations Committee, I've been already reaching out to the chiefs already to hopefully we can get back together and start talking about you know things that we what we need to discuss. One of the questions I was going to ask you about was, have you been discussing anything as far as the, the garbage transfer, anything like that, with Sapatoya Cree Nation or with Pine Creek at all? They haven't contacted me, no. They have not. We, we had a phone, I um, guess that was months ago. Yeah. yeah, month and a half, two months ago. And nothing, and nothing has been uh, We're looking yet. into it on their end to see how they can go okay. forward. So I'll just reach out to them because everybody's sure. holidays and different things are happening over summer, but obviously we've got to keep moving along with that. So. All right, so moving on to 7.3, resolve that the CEO's report be received as information, moved by Councillor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Lentoni. Um, I've got a few questions, so starting at the top. Auditors here, 20th, 21st, 22nd, how is Mr. Ganita handling that? Fine. Okay. Excellent. He's, uh, he's, I think he's quite comfortable with the situation at this point. All right. He's yeah. He's good. That's all I need to hear with that. Um, yeah, what were the three and four on one? No. Um, sorry. Bear with me. Okay, my three and four is all the balls and gone. Um, oh, uh, an inquiry about um, a, a residential amateur radio tower. Do we have policy for towers being erected in uh, residential areas, Mr. Paul? I've been contacting, or trying to contact Industry Canada. Uh, the resident has told me he's been given the all green uh, to get it done, but I'm, I've been awaiting the call from Industry Canada or their rep in Winnipeg just to see where our liability lies on the leveling of radio tower in residential area. Okay. And then four, with, in regards to the cemetery on ex, um, service expected, how did that go and have we resolved some of the issues that were arising previously? Which story? Number four in regards to the cemetery and... Um, the, meeting, the meeting between the foreman. Right. And workers. Foreman uh, and workers um, on what level of service is expected, etc. Yeah, we've, like, we're, we're kind of at an impasse there because we... You know, we've, we've marked on the lawn wars where they're not to go below to, to cut to make sure that we're that we're cutting it up at a proper height. Uh, the water pump, whenever it's reported not working, our guys go down and, and make sure it's working. Uh, if, if multiple taps are turned on, it, it definitely struggles. So it would be nice if the residents, I don't know, took, took note of that. Everyone can't use it at the same time. but. Uh, yeah, as, as much as we can with, with the employees that we that we can send out there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's everything I have. Councilor Mario, did you have something? Um, yeah, I just want to comment uh, or to Mr. Cole on the, the thoroughness and the completeness of the report. This is something that's encouraging to see the detail on that report. Yeah, thank you. So. 
Just on the tower, if, if, if a tower is over a certain height, it would require a variance, would it not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.1. Resolution uh, Prostate Cancer Awareness Month for September the 9th, two, September 2019. Whereas prostate cancer is the most common cancer among Canadian men, and whereas one in seven Canadian men will be diagnosed with the disease, and whereas an estimated average of 11 Canadian men die from prostate cancer every day, and whereas the survival rate for prostate cancer is nearly 100% when detected early, but three out of four men will die when found late, and whereas black men and those with family history of disease are at greater risk, and whereas since prostate cancer Canada was formed in 1994, the death rate has been cut in half, and whereas awareness and conversation about prostate cancer can lead to screening and early detection that saves lives, and whereas the Town of Swarnock supports Prostate Cancer Canada and everyone committed to raising awareness about prostate cancer, therefore, on behalf of the Town of Swan River Town Council, Swan River Town Council, we do hereby proclaim September 2019 as Prostate Cancer Awareness Month in the Town of Swan River. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> Result of the Swan Valley Historical Museum financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018 be received. Moved by Councillor Memorial, seconded by Councillor Lentoni. Discussion? Councillor White? Uh, I don't debate any of the numbers of White. There are numbers that have to be audited by other entities. These are unaudited numbers. It's not the law. This is on. These are the audited numbers, sir. Well, it says the beginning of the statement. Right. We have not performed an audit or a review engaged in game in respect to these numbers. Readers of Cox, these statements may not be appropriate for their purposes. It's because they're not audited, because they're not required to have an audit due to the municipal contributions that are under certain dollar values. Councilor, so they, they don't have to have it on? Councilor, what They, I do believe they are under the $5,000 tr threshold and therefore the Town of Swan River would not require um, them to be audited. However, I'm not sure if that's the same for other municipalities, but I believe that it's for ours, our grant is less than the required amount for auditing purposes. I think we put our grant at like $499.99. 4, Okay. Okay. okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Is the $5,000 value in the legislation or is that our own internal policy? Oh, I haven't checked into it. I can check with Terry. I just know that Swan Valley West is $6,000. And, and uh, so if it's not, if it's not, if it's only required by us. I think we should consider looking at that because, um, and candidly, spending extra money for audits. Well, I know nothing against accountants. I don't know why particularly we would want audits on relatively small dollar amounts. Memory search was right. Oreo? They, they did give us an, an explanation on exactly why they didn't, and there was a kind of revenue ruling that they were exempt because of exactly some dollar values. So we did have that discussion. I can, our management can dig that up. It was about a year ago that they provided the history of the documents on that. So, okay. Would we'd rather not. I was, also in I was under the impression that was a CRA um, item as well. Um, I'm assuming, I'm not, like, like I say, for Swan Valley West, I'm an, I would assume that they would want audited financials if that's the case, but I guess we will find out. Okay. All in favor? Or I guess we can vote on that. Sorry. 8.3. Okay. Did we do that resolution already? Not that. <laughs> no. Yeah, this one. 
Oh, I don't know. But he's got the motor. Oh, I see. What did I do? Jump over? Yeah, you jumped over it, so, but you have an 8.3. Just, yeah, I'll read it anyways, but you'll just bump it. Okay. The one previous. Uh, resolve that the Swan Valley Planning District honored his financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018, be received. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Gray. Stop, uh, just opening it because there was something I was going to ask about it. Okay. I don't remember what it was. I think you're going to the board of the historical society. I don't know what they got three of them talking about with it. Um, is, is this the one that the watershed does the. Mm hmm. Yes. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Where are most of the development permits from? Thomas Long River. Maybe you should revisit. It's due for tender uh, at the end of this time next year. Council Memorial. Um, there was last year, I think, before last before the last election, our chief financial officer did send a memo or communication to council that he recommends that. The town put in a bid for the bookkeeping of this organization. What we simply do it. Is there a requirement we have a district? I don't believe so. I I think it's a it's a voluntary thing. Because the city of Dauphin isn't part of a planning district. Well, what my question is why since most of the fees come from us since most of the work is done by us, wouldn't it be, and since I presume, I, I know the only thing I'd want is something that says, yes, we could do it internally, there wouldn't be a problem. Those three things, assuming that those things are all true, then why wouldn't we just do it internally, not be part of it? And we would save triple the, uh, double the uh, amount of the watershed amount. It works out quickly. So consider. Mm -hmm. So uh, we might want to maybe discuss yes, that committee of the whole. Yeah. That was what I was going to ask you about because I, I didn't see exactly the answer. Okay. Through, but it looks fine. Okay. Any other? Any further discussion? All in favor? Case. Okay. It's carried. Where the section 365 to the Municipal Act provides that council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which property, the taxes in respect of which are in arrears for the year, must be offered by for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. And whereas section 372 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality they set any term or conditions for the sale of a property to be sold for taxes and may set a reserve bid in the amount of the tax arrears and costs in respect of the property. Be it resolved that the town of Swan River place a reserve bid on each property included in the 2019 tax sale up to the tax the amount of tax arrears and costs owing. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Are there any lots we actually don't want? <laughs> Too late. All in favor? <coughs> okay. It's carried. Whereas, <clears throat> whereas interest is expressed in subdivided, undeveloped lots along Valley View Drive, and whereas the town expects to adopt and accept the responsibilities set out and development agreements, which would be required. From any, from any other developer organization, and whereas the town of Swan River is the developer for the subdivision, including Valley View Drive, therefore be, be resolved that the town of Swan River, in partnership with Municipal Developers Incorporated, initiate a development process on lots 10 through 32 of Plan 2372 according to the town of Swan River Development Agreement standards. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? I don't know if that's grammatically correct. The third sentence down, uh, be required off from. I think the off is redundant. 
you you uh, propose to make a change? Oh, for sure. Okay. Get rid of the of. Required from any other mm -hmm. What is What is it? What's the the of doesn't need know. to be in there. Okay. So they're required from any other developed yeah. organization. Okay. Discussion? About the amendment? No. About the, the, main the resolution. Motion. Councilor Gray. Um, do we not have existing lots? We have a We discussed this at the committee of the whole. We have about 10 lots in that Southeast development, and we sell them at a rate of about two to three per year, so we have about three years supply for lots. Yeah. But, but, but the, the kicker is we've sold property on this already. I know. Yeah. Two. But, okay, there's two questions there. Um, the first is why. I remember the quiet of the space of the debate. That's why, because I have the same views then. Um, I, I remember the discussion. I, I can't figure out why we're about we sold the lots, and I can't figure out why would we develop these if we have a three year, four year supply already, unless it takes us four years to develop the lots, and I don't think it does. It takes two years. It takes some time. Yeah, take a year. You think two years? I told the council how how loose the council is with the purse strings to get things done, I suppose. Yeah. The, survey costs come back pasture and local like everything is this is a resolution to initiate it obviously right. we have to approve the costs to do it council one tony i think that it's a great opportunity if a if a customer wants to come to our community and finds an area that we have lots that are surveyed and ready to go and marketable and that we have put them up for sale and that they have been listed for sale and a customer wants to build on that i think it's our due diligence to to develop those if we don't want to sell them then we should not put them up for for sale to begin with but if the opportunity is there for a customer to want to purchase those lots i think it's our responsibility to develop that and if we do develop it and we sell a few more lots because of it we, it's a win for everybody Councillor Gray, through you uh, to I'm not sure who, but are, are we planning on selling these at the same thing that we've been selling the other ones at loss? Like, like this, it's almost like that old joke. You know, the, the guys are all in the grain, and what they need is more trips for bigger trucks. And you go buying grain two dollars and selling it at a dollar fifty. There's a, there was another discussion about that. Were you going to allude to that? There was. It was the uh, the idea that. Uh, we would uh, develop and break down the development costs over a 10 year period and attach them to the lots. But we haven't done that. Not in the past. But we have, don't we have an existing policy that says we're not doing it? I mean, don't we have to look at this more completely and say we're going to actually charge for the lots what they're worth? I mean, at what the cost is. I mean, I, I, I don't have any problem. I just. I, I, if next year we're going through the budget and it costs us $150,000 to develop these lots, okay, I will be an unhappy voter here or elsewhere if, if I'm being asked to contribute to basically a subsidy for somebody else's lot. So I, I don't know, we already have a policy, so we have to. I think we have to, as part of that plan, then rescind the other policy and say, we're not going to do this. We're not going to give, we'd actually talked about doing that anyway. We're not going to give away free lots or, or whatever, or we're going to. But then if we have 10 others, why do we need? I, I, I'm not getting it. Councillor Lentoni, then Councillor Deloria. I think that this was, uh, uh, we did discuss this at the I community. Mean, of a whole, um, and I think that the intent was for this development, um, and only this, or the I was under the impression that what we came up with was for this development itself um, to see what our results would be, and then move forward in any other development. But I was, what we did discuss is that the lots would be sold as um, using the precedent of the two that we did sell and that the development costs would be shared over the remaining lot or the 
will be shared over the development or over all of the lots in that development over a 10 year period. Um, so I guess we would be recovering the sale of the lot would be the sale of the lot, but the cost is what we'd be recovering. But all of the costs, as I recall, we already sold the lots. Are we recovering now from them? The, the cost, all of this, those costs, is there something in our agreement that says we're able to do that? Well, I can't imagine that. We didn't actually have a, a sales agreement, so we contacted the the people and they're they are okay with the, the way this is happening because if we if we would have gone forward with our process, they were gonna get hit with a massive item cost. Uh, as would every like if you develop piecemeal, as would every lot, if you do each one as an extension, you know, it's cheaper to develop twenty lots than it is one at a time. So they were asking for a basically help to to develop, and we decided in the committee of the whole that we would now go forward with the full development as opposed to the one at a time. Okay. I don't know if we're with that's Councilor Gloria. I, I guess um, well, should this resolution fa fail, depending on how the argument, we, we should at least consider passing something to get the survey work done so they know what at, height, at, at what height to build their things at. Right. I, I, I would hate I would hate for this not to pass here tonight and then not to be able to build it or build it too low when this does get developed by whoever ten years from now or whatever. So. Uh, if if this doesn't pass, I would I would advocate that we at least get us the survey work done so they know what height to build at. As as far as I agree with what Councilor Gray is saying is we're gonna we're gonna sell these at a loss because we no one pays what the cost to develop. That's why we don't have private developers here is because no no one would pay the, the actual cost of the lots. I guess we, we made the choice to develop this when we sold them the lots. We shouldn't have sold them the lots whenever that was six, eight months ago if we weren't going to develop them. So we at least need to get them hydro there in a in a fashion that if we sold the lots, we chose to be developers. How, how did we sell the lots again? I don't remember. They basically put in a request. But, but if we haven't developed them, why do we sell them lots? I'm getting my getting this. How did that come to us without there being a development plan already for all the lots? That's yeah, what they, I guess there there technically is I guess they're they're not fully developed, but they're legal lots. And they, they put in an offer up to them. And was all yeah. this discussed? Because I don't remember any of this discussion. Maybe it was before I got here. And if it was before I got here, then fair enough. But if it was after I got here, I don't remember any of this discussion. Because I would have thought if there were undeveloped lots that the that, that council would have said, would have told us, look, you're undeveloped lots, we're going to have problems because you're going to have hydro costs and so on, they're going to come back and you're going to have a bunch of extra costs. Because I would, I can't imagine that I would have listened to that and said, yeah, let's go ahead and take a chance. It doesn't seem like me. Councilman Tony. I lost my, where I was going with my story. But, um, I guess the, 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 yeah, we did sell the lots. It came to this, to us that we we're sitting here when the request for the sale of lots came and we, I'm assuming, voted unanimously to, to sell them at the, based on their proposal that they presented to, to council. Um, yeah, and absolutely, and I guess that this, this whole tr situation transpired from them calling hydro and hydro, um, telling them that the costs were, would be astronomical and the fact that they would be having to set up hydro for the the remainder of the lots. So that's where I guess the, the proposal coming forward was either if we sold them, we should develop them. If we don't want to develop them, we shouldn't have sold them. Well, or we should buy them back at their cost and buy where we have developed lots. I don't understand. I, I, we, we never, I, if you tell me I'm wrong, I'll eat my words, but I don't remember ever being told we're being sold lots that are going to cost us a fortune a few months down the road. I could have I maybe it was a sweet deal. Were, no, I, were we told that? I think we were, it was explained to council that we had water and sewer, but no road plans. Uh, that was, was important. That there's no services, no hydro, no nothing. Okay, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see the discussion because I, 
if we had that discussion, um, then presumably we said, well, that's going to be on that then. Councilor DeLuca. Yeah, that was definitely said. Okay. No, sir. So, uh, that's right. Would the, the resolution that was passed to sell them lots get, do, can, can we find the, what, what does it actually say? Did, did it say that those costs would be on them? I guess because how, how can we go back and charge them if we've already sold them lot, the lots? Well, there, there's, there was no agreement written up. It was just a, you know, a resolution, I guess, for the town to sell the lots. We okay. never actually got any paperwork. There's no sale agreement made. There's no, uh, so there's no, so how did this, how did it legally change hands if it was there? It didn't, it hasn't. Oh, it has. so they haven't bought the lots yet then? No. Well, then let's not sell them lots. Exactly. I, I was under the impression they had already bought them. They want to live there though. I know they want to live there, but I want to live on the moon. Doesn't mean I can live there. Okay. Uh, Councilor uh, Wintoli. Yes, I was under the impression that they bought the lots as well as that we approved the sale of those lots. I will have to double check, but I just, I don't know of any monetary. So and I guess, sure, it was Go ahead. And I was, I don't think that there are, they have no issues paying for the cost of, of the development for their, for their lots. The question is, is that, or the, I think that their concern is, is that they don't want to pay for development of other lots in which that's going to happen in order for theirs to be developed. That was discussed at the original resolution because we uh, we did say that these were undeveloped lots and we said, well, if they really want to be here, they're going to have to pay that. <clears throat> you know, that, sounds right. like something, that sounds like a discussion we would have had. But I, I, yeah, if they haven't sold, I, I would... Like I, I'm really concerned that we're going into the development of lots that we don't need immediately in a time when we have some economic flux. And I, like I, I, I'm not big on spending a bunch of money on a development. Comes at this point. Well, I can't remember who the mover or second was, but if it was me, I, I would motion that we table this until we find out if the lots have even sold. Because exactly. if, if the lots have not sold, that changes my opinion on things entirely. I would have to double check. Well, I think we have to double check. Who's here? You were in the second. I can't remember. Councilor uh, Tony moved it. I think the second. That's right. Okay. Okay. Tony and Teresa. Yeah. Teresa. Oh, okay. So if that's the case, uh, do you uh, agree to table it until we find out the rest of the information? Um, or we can vote on it right now. Um, I'm going to move that we refer the matter to the committee as a whole for a decision of determination of the parameters and the costs and a report to us at the next council meeting or a future council meeting. Two council meetings? No, you've already you've already had a mover and a seconder. You need to vote on it. No, we can move to table or we can move to adjourn. We can move to amend. Those are all subsidiary motions. So you, you have to have your mover or seconder to do that. Right, and that's what I was just asking. Because either way, if you don't agree to that, then we're going to vote on it. No, no, I don't think that's that's right. Well, it's not according to Roberts in any event. We're entitled to move, move subsidiary motions. Is there something in the municipal act? That there's, a, there's a mover and a seconder. Right. They own the floor until they get their vote. That's not that's not the law at all. I mean, that's not, that's not how the process works. There are a bunch of subsidiary motions. I, I just went to school for it. I, I guess I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I'm telling you there are subsidiary okay, well, I don't think we need to get into debate about that. So yeah, let's just move forward with what we know. And, and if the mover and the second are agreed to table it, then we'll table. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we go on it. Okay. And we're moving the table just to find out if the if well, the lots are sold or not. Oh, well, yeah. and to discuss the whole process. I, I get it. I, I guess my, my feeling is, or my thoughts are, uh, I, I, I find it, I guess we do have the service lots in other areas. If we have ta uh, uh, people willing to spend tax money for, you know, on lots, why, why would we not want to pursue that avenue? Go ahead. I guess I don't know how to answer that that's, an, that's, an, that's a question for council i just wanted to add from the from the buyer's point of view or the people that want to purchase so they they've asked to purchase these lots we've said yes uh they've looked into the development costs they were high they've requested help on that 
we, 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 we responded to them saying, well, do we want better? We're going to develop this whole thing and charge everyone equally. That's where they sit. If we go back on this, like obviously our reputation is going to take a hit with that. But uh, just just as information for the community and the whole the future. Right. And I 100% agree. We're going to okay. look like you. I, I, I would like to, I guess, if council wants to, I don't know. I, I'm, dead. I'm torn at whether we're voting or not voting on it, I guess. But there's more discussion to be had. And I can't hear because somebody is driving up and down the street. And, like, Idiots. If we vote and it's defeated, what happens then? Do you still come back again at some point in time and be rewarded or something like that? Councilor I guess I would just like to for to know if the lots have sold or not. Right. Like that. It's like we've accepted their offer to purchase. Doesn't that but that has the legal I, courses taken pays? Not that I know of, but I I could be wrong. We've I've got a good what the answers are. Okay, so so can, can we So I guess going back to the legal question, Mr. Kroll, we accepted their offer to purchase the lots. Doesn't that compel us to selling them? I have no opinion. So what are we going to do here? Like, do you want to table it until we have more information? Yes, we're tabling it until we have more information. Okay. <clears throat> So moving on, uh, where are we here? 8.6, resolved that the building permits 5419 through 6619 with a total estimated value of 1,557,500 be received. Moved by Councillor Linton. Sorry, I, I need to back up a little bit because <clears throat> if I may, Your Worship. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to relieve some of my pressure at the moment. Um, we as council elected our CAO to do his job um, and we rely on the information that he presents us going forward. If we don't rely and take the person that we've hired, his opinion on the items at hand, then why did we hire our CAO? So I'm just a little bit frustrated with how sometimes our CAO is questioned to the point where he has no, gets to the point where he has no opinion. Moving on to 8.6, please. Okay. Uh, we'll add that item into uh, uh, camera, please. <clears throat> uh, so, sorry, lost my building permits. Uh, moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Mentoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Unfinished business 9.1. I guess we have the rise discussion. We do have part of that in camera, but uh, the other sort of the other that's going to lead to the possible funding. So I guess uh, with the discussion, I'll move forward to. Um, Rise. Sure. Professor Gray, Councilman Tony. I think that we have <clears throat> a fair understanding with the budget and the resolution to pay for the budget. The question that I think that we were stuck on was when we originally made the resolution, it was stated if all the other if, if all the other municipalities were on board with that, and I think that the interpretation would have at that time was in full and we just need to amend our resolution so because the other partnering municipalities did not pay in full so that's what we need to amend our resolution and i i'm assuming that we're all in favor of of that if that does need to move into camera so be it but i think that we can pass or at least have the budget and the funding resolution go to a vote in to the in in out of camera, out of camera. Out of camera. So that you're saying is that the um, the levy for our contribution would be lowered to uh, or, or remain? No, it would be remain the same amount, but the only amendment 
in the previous resolution was that every municipality was in, but in now that we're learning that not every municipality is in, we're wanting council to know that we're still contributing our fair share, even though that the other municipalities have not. Okay. So then we will then have to vote on that. And that this is what the change is in 9.11. Okay. So you want to comment? Because yes. otherwise, if we debate, we'll do that during I, I, I would, the reading of the resolution. Make a comment. Can we not defer this to after the in-camera discussion? Because some of that, those discussions may impact how we decide on how to deal with this. I, I would agree with that. Okay. So the 9.11, let me leave that till after we're done to come out of camera. <clears throat> be resolved that the accounts is hereby uh, approved for payment. General accounts check number 24809 to 24848 for a total of 137,376 and 11 cents. Bank draft in the amount of 32,169.16 plus an $8.50 bank service fee. Payroll account checks number 4504245.10 for a total of $113,050.56. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Okay. All in favor? It's carried. We resolve that bylaw 7 2019 procurement bylaw be read a second time as amended. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Ellisari. Uh, when Tony, discussion. So this was discussed at the community hall that I was absent at. Right. And, and is this an amendment of, of what we previously passed? Is this the substitution? What is this? Because I read it and I don't see what it is. I was having trouble following what it was. And I didn't see, I don't have minutes yet from the other, from the media hall, so I don't know. This is the recommendation from uh, management on our, our uh, procurement bylaw. Okay. So I have a couple of issues. Um, one is, um, the arbitration process and the second is um, the, uh, what we had before had a, a pretty clear delineation of what the um, um, of the process for setting out the assessment grid is that in here somewhere that I've missed uh, no that's going to change with each contract okay but, but is there a pro is there something in here that sets out how the process is and how it gets approved that I missed because I, I didn't see it that was the issue that was the big thing because Otherwise, it, it, most procurement policies don't have the grid system built into it. You're supposed to have competent people actually looking at it. But the, the, the evaluation material is listed within the tender or whatever document. When you the tender, when you you're going to build the parameters that you're going to examine this by. And you stick with it. Then when it comes in, you you go against that, you say. If you're going to, the scoring and so on is going to be set out in that? Well, it won't be set out in the policy because it would change according to according to what you want to have done. But, but there's something that says that the assessments and the scoring process is going to be set out in advance. Is, that, is there something in there that says that? Because I didn't yeah. see well, that. Well, it would yeah, be in the tender, and it is in there, yeah. Okay, so, more, so, yeah. so it's in there? Yeah, I read it. This okay. It okay, I read it, and I didn't see it. That was the other thing. I'll find um, it. Uh, that's fine. Find it, please. The, uh, the second is the arbitration. Why did we put in an arbitration process for disputes? Why wouldn't that go to council? Are you guys experts in contracts? I, never mind. Never mind. I, again, I think that I echo the same thing as what Councillor Lentoni has said that we are not professionals as far as drafting these, the, these bylaws and so forth, and we have people that we have hired to do that and they make the recommendations to us and this is what they, they tell us. Of course, we can, we can look at it and make tweaks and changes. We can pass them. We can also amend them as time moves on as well. The only, uh, I was only asking about one thing about the arbitration process. If there's a dispute, why would we have an arbitration process? I'm missing something. 
Carl's Memorial. Um, wouldn't be the, ar- like the arbitration process that's developed here is if the town, like as the corporation, the council has a dispute with the contractor, we need to have a third party, which is the arbitration. We can't be the arbitrator if we're... Well, if we're one of the parties to the dispute. Isn't the dispute... Am I missing, I'm missing something? Like, because I, I read the process. There's, a, there's, an, there's an evaluative process and the warning of a contract, and it's by grades. Yeah. Right? Am I missing something, or is that? This right? is arbitration from the comp. The, what, this is a year down the road, a year into the comp. We're building. So the this pool. is arbitration in the agreement, in, in the in the. It's the process when a contract goes sideways. Okay. It's the okay. process to say it's, it's not a always not board. somebody who's an unsuccessful bidder who's arbitrary. Who's no. Bidding. No. The only recourse they have is to come, and we can, as we talked about, we can talk our way through it and say. This is where you were really weak. You didn't explain this, and even though you have a better idea, the other company explained it better. Okay, but the arbitration isn't with respect to the, the bidding process. I'm then I no, no, the bidding process that was is completely up to council. Fair enough. Yeah. And that was that. That was my question. I was trying to figure out why it was, and I was reading, misreading it, obviously. Okay, that's it. Okay. Further discussion. Uh, Under the liability cap, there's a maximum of XXX. Do we, is there a value to be in No, there? This, is, this is almost an instruction manual as well. Oh. And so you're going to set that according to what the contract oh, yeah. is, yeah. right? Okay. So, and generally that liability cu- clause is only going to come back to how much it costs the engineers to actually put together the, the bid proposal. And that's only if we cancel a bid after everybody went through and spent 40 hours putting together a bid proposal or whatever, there should be some recourse for them to actually gain some money back, especially if we arbitrarily just pull away from a, from a bid. So. Okay, Councilor Antoni. Sorry, I didn't know. Okay, I thought you did. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Staying or did you vote? I vote. Oh, okay, that's it. Okay, carry. Okay, the no notice of motion. So we will resolve that resolve that pursuit to section one fifty two three of the municipal act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We'll be discussing rise and also some personal issues. Okay. Uh, moved by Councilor Antoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. I was forgetting.